and good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. It's actually sports night tonight on the Pete Mazzetti Show and I am joined by a panel of lacrosse experts and we're going to I'm going to actually introduce them one by one. We're going to start with this distinguished gentleman. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you? Hi, buddy. How are you? Great. And yourself? So what, I'm great. What's your name? Jim and, May. And where do you coach? Brantford High School. You like it? Love it. How long have you been there? This is going to be my 25th year. Wow. Very nice. And we'll, we'll, talk, we'll talk to you during the, next, during the next half hour. So we're going to move down to the second gentleman, distinguished gentleman of the group. Good evening, sir. How you doing, Pete? Good. Thanks for having me. How are you? How are you? Good. Good. Tell us who we are. In I'm uh, Brian Atkins. I'm the head coach at Foreign High School in Milford. How long have you been there? Uh, foreign, I believe this will be my eighth year. I previously have coached at Brantford High School and West Haven High School. Ah, so you coached with this with fine Jim. gentleman. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Jim was an outstanding assistant uh, and a very close friend. We coached together for uh, about 12 years over there. A uh, lot of fun, and, and now we, we now coach against each other <laughs> once a year. <laughs> and last but la not least in the panel of experts, who are you there, my friend, down well, down, down, Pete, down, down Thank you very down much for it. having us on. Hi, Brandon. Getting all these great people together. I and, know. Uh, and I'm Brendan Hyland. I uh, coach at the Morgan School. Um, I've been coaching there for seven years. Uh, this will be my eighth and my second year as the head coach. And you coach boys lacrosse. Boys lacrosse, yes, sir. You like it? I love it. Yeah, yeah it's something that's kind of been within my bloodline and... Um, and you know, with my close family here, so uh, I appreciate that I get to be side by side with these guys. I know this is this is this is, and at most of my viewers and listeners might or might not know, I'm actually your director of social media for that. Morgan you Boys are, yeah. We're so very I, had fortunate. I, had, I had a chance to meet all these fine gentlemen during last year, and yes, yeah, and uh, we're very fortunate to have you uh, yeah. both in boys lacrosse and the football team. That's right, and. Um, and yeah, you, you got to meet both of these guys uh, through our scrimmages that we had last year. And mm -hmm. uh, Jim and I uh, had a game that was a that's game right. that's been happening for many years now. That's right. So let's, let's start the conversation tonight, guys, about the sport of lacrosse and what it means to each of you guys. I know you probably not only coached, I'm, I'm assuming you all played lacrosse during growing up. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah? I started, uh, we did not have youth lacrosse in Massachusetts at the time. I'm from Peabody, Mass. Okay. I started in the ninth grade. I grabbed the goalie stick because I figured it would be the easiest stick to use because it was nice and big. <laughs> be able to catch it. Yeah. I didn't realize that how fast the ball would come off your shin and your shoulder and things like that. So no. I switched the next year immediately to the long pole to play uh -huh. defense. But I've been coaching. I met uh, Frank Barron in 96. He yeah. gave me the job right. with him at Hand High School for four years. And then Frank and myself went over and joined Brian in 2000 at Brantford. But I played with, uh, I played lacrosse in college. A couple of legends, one John Reba, uh, people like that, head sure. coach of Wesleyan, yeah. national champion. I played uh, in high school with a couple of guys that went on and played big time lacrosse. But I went to the University of Haven to play football and lacrosse, so. You did, very nice. What about, what about you, Ryan? You know, so uh, I, Branford did not have, I went to Branford High School, and they didn't have lacrosse when I was there at high school. So I actually went to Marist College, ended up uh, walking on, and just, uh, it just happened to be, I was working in the athletic department, uh, and I was working under the uh, lacrosse coach, and next thing you know, I uh, spent a lot of time in the uh, racquetball court, working on my stick work, and uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to be part of the team, part of the program, and then uh, from there, once I got out of college, I was a you know, uh, assistant coach at St. Joe's my first year out, and I was a head coach at 23 years old at West Haven High School. And, uh, you know, I've been doing it ever since, and, you know, and just absolutely love doing it. I, you know, tell the kids I don't really go off or have many hobbies, you know. I, I, <laughs> it's been a lot of time, you know, you know, coaching the sport, you know, with my two boys uh, who are involved in the youth program in Milford, um, you know, and you spend a lot of time we, we end up talking to these guys like this all spring long about you know you spend a lot more time you know communicating with them and your players than sometimes you do with your families because you're constantly in tune to see what's going on mm -hmm. and Brendan um, so I uh, was fortunate enough to have a father Chris Island who 
um, played at Hand High School. Okay. Uh, and playing growing up, and then uh, got me in through the uh, the the process in Madison Lacrosse uh, at a young age, actually in first grade, and uh, so I got to play all throughout my youth, um, and then moved up and played. Uh, my family helped start the. Uh, Clinton Youth Lacrosse Association uh, and we tag teamed with Killingworth and then from there uh, my father was the original head coach at Morgan and uh, I played four years there I was a, a goalkeeper myself um, and then when I went on to college uh, I uh, looked into going to Mount Ida College in Newton Massachusetts sure. and a uh, small D3 private college and um, played a lot of high-level lacrosse there got to go to the NCAA tournament um, which I want to give a shout out to Wesleyan for, for yeah, winning that. Yeah, absolutely, and, um, absolutely. And, uh, but, you know, won some conference championships and uh, unfortunately my college now has uh, closed, Mount Ida College, but uh, my, my coach, Andrew Fink, uh, is starting a program at the University of St. Joseph's in West Hartford, Connecticut. Um, and I want to wish them luck. And uh, so then I just pursued after I graduated my coaching career uh, and landed back at the Morgan School where I went, you know, played high school. And I've just been mentored and, you know, I can't tell you how much I appreciate these, you know, fine gentlemen that are in this room that help pave the way for me. Exactly. Now, how influential is Chris Highland and Frank Barron to the sport of lacrosse? Very, <laughs> I would say beyond belief for myself specifically, right. but but for the shoreline, mm -hmm. huge, huge names. The yeah. Two big household names that have done more than their fair share of helping out from kindergarten all the way through uh, 12th grade. Unbelievable gentlemen, unbelievable. Exactly. I would not be coaching in Connecticut and on my 25th year if it wasn't for the both of them. You, you'll be coaching 25 years this year, huh? Yes. Seems like a lot sometimes. It but, does. Uh, it does. But for what we get back from the program and from the kids, it's so much worth it. And Brian, what what are the names of Chris Highland and Frank Barron mean to you? I mean, uh, so you know, as first started off at West Haven, the, uh, those guys were over at Hand High School along with Jim coaching over there, and the respect they showed me as a young coach, I, I, you know, I can never you know repay. They were just. They were just were just great, not only great coaches, but just great men. And then when those guys came over and, and spent some time with me on my staff at Brantford, I, I know, you know, I, I've had some success as a coach, but I always felt like if I had Jim, Frank, and Chris, you know, along with uh, Joe Alessi, Tony Mortali standing next to me on the sideline, it was going to be a good day because I, I know that I was had some not only great coaches but just great people to, around me. Exactly. And Mr. Highland. Um, well, I'm going to bring it back to, you know, again, my youth years and mm -hmm. my father, uh, Chris Highland, helped um, Frank Barron uh, at Hand High School, Daniel Hand High School, and um, I got to be there at the practices. It was something so special to see lacrosse at another level other than the youth level that I was playing at and to see, you know, young coaches like Jim May at that time bring the fire and the passion and my father at that time bring that passion and then Coach Frank Barron bring the X's and O's and kind of piece it all together was just so special. And, uh, you know, it's a saying that we all still say together, you know, keeping that circle strong and keeping mm -hmm. it unbroken. And, um, you know, I know these two guys can definitely speak towards that as well because just piggybacking off of Brian here, it is, it's, it's rare to go a day without speaking to these guys and, you know, catching up on what's next, what's new. Exactly. Especially during the off season. Oh, yeah. You figured the off season, we don't, we don't want to hear from each other till April, but that's not. <laughs> that, that, well, and Pete, you did a phenomenal that is, that job is getting not them the all case. here. You did a great job getting them all here, and uh, yeah, you know, we were all itching to get you know on set here and enjoy each other's company. I know this is gonna, this is this is gonna, this is going to be a fun show. Now, Brandon, you have something next to you. I was wondering I if you can tell us what that is. Uh, this uh, is a fairly authentic stick. Uh, my father. Um, actually picked it up. Um, a lot of lacrosse and sports in my life had many traditions and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, really bring out, uh, you know, a special part of you. So uh, one of the things that we always utilized uh, was talking about good medicine and good juju and positive thoughts and vibes. Um, 
So we thought we could represent that using a, an authentic uh, lacrosse stick. My father picked it up uh, and had it handmade actually right in front of him um, in upstate New York. Um, and right now the, the area is um, losing it. I don't have the, the area where he picked it up in, okay. in my mind. But uh, so this is our medicine stick. It also represents what, what I was kind of talking about, the, the circle and, you know, that special connection that you have, no matter if you're seeing that, that coach as a rival across the, you know, field from you or uh, if you're sitting next to him right now. It's just exactly. a special thing. <laughs> exactly. It is. And like, like, Brent, like, Brent, like Brandon said, like Brandon and I, and I know Coach May and Coach Atkins, we're basically all a family. We are a band of brothers. Is that correct? Or am I wrong? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. Huge fraternity. It is. Absolutely. And what does that mean to each of you guys to be a fraternity of? Well, I, I believe in lacrosse, mm -hmm. and I, I've played both sports for a long time, but in lacrosse, the college coaches have no problem coming to meet with us, talk to us. It's just a, it, it's an easy go such transition. Uh, maybe in other sports like in football, so on, mm -hmm. not such an easy transition that I've seen over the years. Uh, but that, that's a big deal to me. You know, I, you're nervous as it is as a high school coach wanting to talk to a college guy, um, no matter how many years you've been coaching. Right. But then when you can call them up and they, they put everything at ease, you know, they're, they're there to help you in any way they can. That's a big deal for me. Right. And, you know, and think about it, in our state alone, we had Yale, one Division One, and Wesley, one Division Three. And I know at any point I could contact Andy Shea at Yale or I could reach out to John at Wesleyan, mm -hmm. and those guys will get back to you within 24 hours. And, and like, I don't, you know, that's not happening in other sports. You no. know, the, the, the respect and that, like, you know, the fraternity of the lacrosse coaches, you know, and it's just wonderful that, you know, not only that these are the top programs in the country, but their head coaches are just down to earth, great, great human beings that will, you know, are they're they're willing to help out anyone. I mean, yeah, it's just it's, it really is amazing. Brandon, uh, well, you know, I do have to again uh, note, you know, the amount of coaches that are in here that have been a part of championships is right. just phenomenal. Coach Atkins here and Jim and Frank and my father even, you know, helping out a little bit. We're part of a championship team at Brantford. Uh, you know, John Reba again, giving him his shout out, right. um, is just tremendous. Uh, my father himself played in, you know, one of the first ones uh, that Hand High School ever won. Um, so these are winning coaches. And, you know, as much as that's uh, part of the sport, that's not the only thing that they're about. The connections that they make with their players and, you know, those lasting memories in the locker room or the bus rides, that's the things that the kids take home and learn from. Those wins are helpful, but uh, you know, again, that that brothership is just priceless. Now, out of all the years everybody's been coaching, coaching, you have a favorite memory of a favorite of a favorite game that sticks out in your mind? Myself would be 2003. Okay, it's a little while ago, so I'm hoping that we have better memories. But there's, pl <laughs> there's plenty of good memories. But 2003, we beat Amity nine to eight in triple overtime. And not so much the win, you know, and the championship win, but more so the kids, you know, just that gritty attitude for, you know, for three overtimes. Mm -hmm. It was probably 110 on the field. It was about 90 degrees out in general. Oh. And, you know, of course, the starters hardly came off the field. That, that memory to me is really what lacrosse is all about, what sports is all about. Brian? Uh, you know, obviously that that day for us to win that championship. I think the the one thing uh, Jim didn't mention was uh, Amity had beat us in the conference championship, 15 to six, uh, about a week and a half before that, almost two weeks before that. So we're in the middle of playing. It's a very condensed the state playoffs. We're in our fourth game in eight days. At that point, we had an emotional semifinal game against East Lyme that we won eight six. It was a late game too. So. You know, and that was on a Thursday, so it was a quick turnaround time to prep for Amity and, and play them on Saturday in the heat. And they jumped out a little early on us, and you know, you start thinking, oh, here we go, is it going to be another 15-6? And like, like Jim said, the, the, the grittiness of the kids that day to just compete. We had some middies who, you know, in, in that game had a lot close to 40-something minutes. They, they had to play both ends. 
actually one of the kids now who uh, is my assistant coach at Foreign, Matt Castle, uh, he ended up guarding uh, an attackman one-on-one uh, -on -one as, as a midi, and they kept trying to go one-on-one -on -one against him. And he just shut the kid down over and over again until uh, you know, we were able to you know, win a face-off in the third overtime, drew up something, uh, immediately threw that out because the one kid, we saw a matchup, he ran right to the cage, put it in the back of the net, and it's just a, a feeling I know that we'll, we'll never forget. It's something that we worked very hard to accomplish uh, as coaches and as players. Wow. Brandon? Um, you know, I'm going to go off of my season last year. Um, I'll go with a loss, actually, but still the fact that the kids were so resilient after it. We uh, had a game in one of the storms that came uh, against Waterford and Chris Landry over at Waterford, who had a great season last year. And I remember this game. Uh, you remember this game because in the middle of it, we <laughs> maybe got halfway through the second quarter and we were down like seven to two. We were yeah. just getting, you know, we, we, we were get, getting it stuck to us and uh, um, the game got called so mm -hmm. uh, they had to hop on the bus and get out of there and we agreed to play it you know replay it the next day and we ended up losing uh, you know 7-4 I think was the final score or, or something like that and I mean originally they were really sticking it to us like I said and you know it was looking like it was going to be a 14-3 day if we played that first game but our kids came out fired up you know because they knew that they could hang with them um, and lacrosse is that way, you know, every day is different and it's kind of like a match matchup game where you can have somebody play one on one and that's their day and they're going to take the, you know, that person's number or it could be a team effort. It's just, you know, you, you never know. Would you guys mind sticking around for another segment? Sounds great. We'll be right back. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, However many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Every day, the people in our community rally in support of United Way as we strive together to make a big impact to change lives in Middlesex County. From our main streets to our institutions, from our neighborhoods to our town halls and our classrooms, we're working with our partners to create a stronger community. It's an inspiring effort and we invite you to join us. Volunteer. Donate. Live United. And welcome back. There we go. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. Sitting here with the lacrosse panel of experts, Jim May, Brian Atkins, and Brandon Highland. I'm going to use this term loosely. Gentlemen, mm. welcome back. It's very loosely. Welcome back, guys. Exactly. So, we actually have a studio audience with us tonight. And one of the gentlemen in the studio audience is Wesleyan boys lacrosse coach John Reba. What is John like? Where do, where do I start? I've known Coach Reba for a long time. I'm gonna start from when I first met him in 91. Okay. Unbelievable, unbelievable young man back then. He was a uh, captain of the University of New Haven football team and took me under his wing. And normally that situation Maybe a young guy doesn't get taken under his wing, but everything he did was top class, tough as nails, born leader, an unbelievable human being. Then we stemmed back, we played lacrosse together, scoring machine, it was, it was something unbelievable to watch. And then just being you know, friends over the years and having him have my son in his program for summertime for uh, Cardinals, and then just watching him coach at Wesleyan and then getting to watch him, you know, his sons play. Uh, you know, it, it, it's hard. There's tons of words that you can describe John, but uh, for me, it's a, it's a great friend, great coach, great father. Those are all the things that I've seen from him over my time that I've known him since 91. And Brian? You know, I, I didn't know John at UNH, but guys I know that coach there would say tough, hardworking, you know, disciplined. And I think what you see from his Wesleyan teams are those characteristics, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, everyone knows that Wesleyan's own defense is 
is probably the most you know top defense in the in the country each year and you know that have that discipline to play that type of defense it, you know characteristic of John and who he is he's just a phenomenal person phenomenal coach Brandon and uh, you know I haven't had the pleasure of meeting John personally yet um, but uh, I'm excited to get to talk with him in between sessions here and uh, um, get to know him further but to go to that championship weekend and watch again Yale and Wesleyan take the top spots was something special and it only can speak towards you know the the character towards their head coach and the way the players believe in him exactly, exactly. now Jim let's talk and I know we, we touched on this last time you were on with me let's talk a little bit about Frank Barron and who Frank Barron is I met him in 1996 it was called the Daily Grind coffee shop and the greatest thing about that day was not that he hired me on the spot as an assistant at hand, mm -hmm. but he knew about eight coaches that coached me or coached against me back in Massachusetts. Wow. And right then and there, I was like, wow, this is, you know, I was pretty excited. I was probably like a kid in a candy shop. And little did I know that he would be like my mentor, my father, one of my best friends up until this date. It's unbelievable. The passion that he has as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a coach, to me has been second to none since I've met him. It's unbelievable. Wow. Brian? What yeah, you I mean, I, Frank, when I first, you know, I met Frank coaching against him, then he, uh, he asked if he could come help me out. I mean, that was, it was probably a huge turning point in my young coaching career to have a, a legend like Frank Barron, you know, want to be part of your staff. And, you know, we could talk X's and O's with Frank and his outstanding offensive mind. And he would always have an offense or an extra man play drawn up and always constantly work on that. But like Jim says, the compassion he showed for the other kids is second to none. He really absolutely loved. He, he, he not afraid to go up to a kid and, you know, just, just hug him and let him know everything's going to be okay. You know, and that's one of the things... You know, that, that's probably his best quality, never mind his brilliant lacrosse mind, but he shows how much he truly does care about kids. Brandon? Um, so I'm going to try to go. This is always hard to talk about Frank uh, and not bring lacrosse into it because he is the wizard of Connecticut, you know, and that's everybody right. that right. comes through Connecticut lacrosse, he literally just said this to me before the show, somehow goes through him, touches him in some way. Um, and uh, so... To see what his family has been through, you know, hearing Jim and Brian both touch on his, you know, mm -hmm. fathering, right. uh, and to see what his son fought, you know, and uh, Greg Barron, who I got to grow up with on the practice field and, you know, pass lacrosse with and drop lacrosse balls with and chase lacrosse balls with and, you know, the hand high school parking lot. Um, and then to see the struggles that he went through fighting leukemia. And that family being so tight knit and strong was just a special quality to gain when I was young. And then to continue to see, you know, this tight knit coaching group be together and them, you know, allow me to be a part of it still um, really speaks, you know, just loud, loudly to me. And, uh, and, you know, now Frank is also fighting, you know, a stint of uh, cancer and his sickness. And to get a text every day from him, uh, you know, in the morning or whenever, whatever time it is, it just really boosts your day, you know, makes you kind of reconfigure what you're doing. And, uh, you know, we say keep the circle strong and to get that text from him is something that I, I cherish. Exactly. Exactly. So what does the circle mean to each of you? Obviously to me, being director of social media for my friend down there on the end, it means a lot. It, before Brendan had me do social media for do social media for lacrosse. I knew nothing about the sport, but I learned. One of the things that I learned is it's a fast it's fast paced sport, and you gotta keep your eye on the ball, and you gotta watch the game because you never know it's gonna be like. Is it like football where it stops the clock? No, the clock keeps running. You keep running and. That's what lacrosse means to me, but it's also, like, like we talked about before, it's a band of brothers and it's a brotherhood. What do you guys think? I mean, I, I think two things Frank would always say. 
that always stood out to me was, it's not about lacrosse. You would tell the kids that, you know, there's some days we're gonna yell at you, some days we're gonna tell you some great things, but at the end of the day, it's not just about lacrosse. It's just about developing, not only as a player, but more importantly, as a person. Mm -hmm. And that was always a message that Frank was trying to convey to the kids. And the second thing, and I, I still use all the time, if this is the hardest thing you're gonna have to do, playing a tight game in the fourth quarter, if this is the hardest thing you have to do, your life's gonna be pretty good. Right. You know, and those are just two statements that he would always say that stick out to me that, you know, what we're doing, yeah, we're, we're out there, we're battling for four quarters, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a sport. You know, there's other battles like Frank is going through, like his son went through, uh, that are a lot more important than what we're doing on a sideline for 48 minutes. Exactly. Jim? The best thing that I, that, I, that I like about the situation is every kid that he's ever coached is able to bring their college entrance uh, essays to him. Mm -hmm. And he has never said no to anybody in the 25 years that I've been coaching with him. And every single time he's written it, I have read it, and every kid has gotten accepted. Wow. That Brandon. is huge. Brandon? Um, well, I think, you know, if we're talking about the circle, it's, it's this, you know. Pete, I'm so fortunate to have known you these last, you know, five or so years, five plus years, and right when I introduced you to these guys, they, they knew you, you fit right in. They knew you were a part of the circle, and there was no question about it. And uh, so that, you know, how loving and caring we all are and accepting we all are is really, you know, fortunate. And the other thing is, uh, you know, again, I, I, I'm so fortunate to play you know, for Ann and Coach Atkins and, and Branford with, you know, Coach May and Coach Barron and um, my team, we put circle on our helmet. We, mm -hmm. we tape it and write it on our helmet. Yep. And it's not just for Frank Barron. It's not just for Greg Barron. It's for everybody and anybody out there that's, that's struggling, that's, you know, needs a little support or, you know, a positive thought. And that's something that I think has trickled down from Coach Barron and from all my mentors. These guys sitting next to me is – you know, just giving those positive thoughts. Um, and it could just be that right there. You know, that's enough. Well, guys, that's it for tonight. So I want to thank you guys for coming down. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. On behalf, of, it, on behalf of the panel, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. And we'll see you next time.